Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'd like to call to order our community redevelopment agency meeting. The date is April 10th and the time is 6, uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Madam Clerk, roll call. Chair Lawson. Here. Vice Chair McCoy. Here. Commissioner Miller Anderson. Present. Commissioner Lanier. Here. Commissioner Spiritus. Here. Also present on the dais, Mayor Ronnie Felder. Here. Attorney Chris Smith and Attorney Opal McKinney Williams with Pittman Law Group. Jonathan Evans, the CRA Executive Director, Scott Evans, Director of Planning and Development, Anita Jenkins, Director of Neighborhood Services, and Shirley Desir, Interim CRA Clerk. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Vice Chair Roger McCoy. Do we have any additions, deletions, or substitutions? None from staff, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Disclosures from the council, from the commissioners? Motion to adopt. So moved. Move. Second. Motion been made and properly seconded. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Miller Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Spiritus? Vice Chair McCoy? Yes. Chair Lawson? Yes. That vote passes four to five to zero. Consent agenda. Uh, consent agenda is routine business in nature, and the consent agenda is approved with one single majority vote. If any items want to be removed from the consent agenda, commissioners may remove them. Is there any commissioner that would like to remove an item from consent? Can we have a motion to adopt? Move, move to approve consent. Motion been made. Do we have a second? Second. Motion been made and properly seconded. Madam Clerk, do we have any? I'm sorry, did you say we don't have any public comment cards for consent? There are no public comment cards, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Miller Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Spiritus? Yes. Vice Chair McCoy? Yes. Chair Lawson? Yes. That vote passes five to zero. Regular agenda? Madam Clerk? Resolution number 2024-11, authorizing issuance of an invitation to negotiate for development of a new mixed-use project located at 2600 and 2601 Broadway. Mr. The acceptance of public comment cards are now closed. Mr. Chair, we have no comment cards. Motion for resolution. So moved. Second. Thank you. Ms. Scott Evans. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the CRA board, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this item is requesting to issue an invitation to negotiate uh, for development of properties located at 2600 and 2601 Broadway. These are the two corners, uh, the intersection of Broadway and uh, Blue Heron. It's the northeast corner and the northwest corner for redevelopment at that site. The city had issued an RFP for this site, which closed in December of 2023. At that time, unfortunately, we received uh, no responses for the development proposal. So the ITN is a change. Um, we're proposing to reissue under the ITN in order to make it easier for a uh, potential development partner to respond. Uh, we're asking for board uh, uh, support tonight, uh, additionally, to make some changes. Um, the RFP was restricted to market rate only. And part of the discussions that, that were held, um, Lambert Advisory is the consulting P3 consulting firm who's helping us with this project. And some of the feedback they got um, from some of the proposers who chose not to submit uh, was that the project as um, an eight-story multifamily building with structured parking underneath uh, was just not feasible at that time. 
Um, they couldn't make a market rate performer work. Um, and especially they mentioned uh, not only the construct cost of construction, but particularly the interest rates that exist uh, currently uh, in the construction market. Um, we would like to um, introduce the concept that we would be willing to discuss um, assistance with that parking garage, as mentioned, as one of the high cost items for this project. Um, we feel it's important to get a project that has a parking garage because it helps us achieve a lot of density right in the center of the city um, by having a nice high quality development, but it is, it is a costly uh, component of the project. So we're proposing to be able to consider um, any request for help with that parking if it was justified by the performer. Um, since this is the third issuance of this opportunity, um, we want to make it an ITN. Also, we would maintain the requirements for to show that they have the quality experience um, and the financial capacity to complete the project. But we, we reduce the uh, amount of um, time required to make a proposal so that we, uh, they would be able to provide a concept, an outline of their approach, um, and then uh, show uh, how they would propose to achieve that financially. Um, and we wanted to do this so that we would have more interest from the development community. And the, uh, the second change also is to allow um, the provision of some affordable housing options. Um, they could be a mix of market rate or affordable, could be market rate or it could be affordable. Um, and we felt like that would open up uh, the potential development community to different sources of income. Um, there have been several streams that have come available in the state uh, for projects that include some component of affordable housing to try and uh, get more interest in this proposal. Um, with the board's uh, consent this evening, we would uh, provide the ITN based on the, those changes from the previous RFP to the city's procurement department uh, to get it issued. Um, we would like to issue it um, in the month of May and have it on the street during the month of May and June and then have them due in July. Uh, and then we would bring that back before this board. Uh, we would rank them and bring them back for the board's uh, final selection of who we would begin uh, uh, negotiations to try and get a development agreement. And with that, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll pause for any board questions. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Question on the board? Chair? Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Peters. Uh, Mr. Evans, Mr. Peters. When, when you're talking about an ITN, can you explain to us what you're referring to? Are you saying that you're not going to stick to the eight stories? You're going to permit higher than eight stories? Um, we can allow the developer. So the, at the property as owned is has a requirement that the maximum they could build is eight stories. So. A proposal for the properties uh, that we are including in the ITN, um, the maximum they could do is eight stories. They could propose something less, um, but we we did uh, put in a concept that shows an eight-story development because we would like to maximize the site. We can put in the ITN as was in the RFP, uh, the option that if a developer can acquire additional adjacent property such that it brings the total of property above two acres, they could then apply for through the city's PUD zoning to get a much more uh, high density project uh, of 20 stories. We did have that option in the previous RFP uh, and if the, it's the board's pleasure, we could continue to provide that option. If they can acquire more property, then they could apply for a more dense project. Additional comments? Vice Chair McCoy, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Scott Evans, just a couple, I guess, conforming language issues. Looking at the resolution, it refers to Section 2, the Riviera Beach CRA approves the draft language within the attached outline for an invitation to negotiate for the provisions of a public private partnership, P3 development, of a mixed use development at 2600 and 2601. Am I to assume that the development objectives is the outline? Yes, the um, development objectives and submittal requirements um, that are provided in the backup are what we're proposing 
is our approach. It's not the ITN, it would go into the city's formal ITN document, but that is our approach to the project. Well, it just doesn't refer to it as the draft or an outline. And so um, that's very important, Mr. Scott Evans. We just have been dealing with some really, um, I, I guess, subjective language and solicitation. So when it said draft outline of the RFP, I was thinking that there was some other language or draft language. I was thinking there was something else that I was missing. Um, I like the evaluation criteria. Um, but I guess, is it everything in all four of these pages that's just going to be incorporated into the ITN? Uh, yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Chair. Um, the, the, what's contained in these pages would be incorporated into the ITN. We would use the city's ITN document that they've used previously, um, which includes a variety of different details for submittal responses, uh, legal process. Uh, but the information that's in that, uh, development objectives and submittal requirements, which was called the outline, um, we, that would all be in the ITN. Mr. Chair. Uh, okay, so, so that's a great point. If they're going to use their other language that they already have, I guess, started using for the city hall solicitation, then we shouldn't use terminology such as draft language within the attached outline. You know, the CRA incorporates the development objectives. I would much rather us uh, say that because here's where it becomes a problem, Mr. Scott Evans. We just seen with the insurance agent of record um, how much, you know, the devil's in the details as far as that. If you want to incorporate this, that's cool. But this isn't a draft outline. This isn't draft language. So I, I would definitely offer, offer up an amendment that we incorporate the development objectives instead of draft language, because I would expect that the other language was going to come from procurement, which is my next recommendation. The resolution refers to purchasing. It should refer to the city procurement department instead of purchasing. Would you agree? Uh, yes, I would agree. Okay. Now, lastly, section three says the Riviera Beach CRA will permit, and I guess the new language will say, the procurement department to package, complete, and issue the invitation to negotiate. Help me understand this. Are we being very specific and intentional in using that terminology? Because I'm curious to know if this is going to be a situation where staff comes back with respondents that they believe doesn't, for whatever reason, meet the criteria are we going to have the responsibility since we're issuing it that we're the body that now needs to, if we choose to cancel it, or is this something that's going to already be incorporated by what's already existing under the procurement code? Mr. Chair, Mr. Evans, go ahead. The CRA is required to provide uh, to follow the the procurement code of the city. Um, so we're asking the purchasing department. To, I'm sorry, the procurement department to issue this uh, on our behalf, but the decisions and actions related to this would be brought back before the CRA board, as not the city council. Right. But what I'm saying, I, I was just hoping, or maybe I'm trying to just get some clarity. So if there's a situation where your team doesn't believe that the respondents there weren't enough respondents. Do you guys have the unilateral ability to cancel the solicitation? Is my question. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Evans. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, with with uh, what's provided for in the procurement code, yes, that the staff does effectively have that ability to cancel the, the solicitation. However, I do want to to make sure it is clear this would be. Uh, the third time that we would go through this particular um, process with this particular parcel. And since this is a challenging parcel to, uh, to develop our intent behind the solicitation is to deem the proposals responsive and responsible. If in fact that is 
uh, the case, then we're going to bring them to the CRA board for the purposes of facilitating the public presentation and the board itself doing the ranking exercise because of just the, the sheer size and, and scope of this particular project. And, and we do want to make sure that it aligns with what the board wants to see on this, this particular parcel. So this is how we plan on effectively bringing this up. So basically bypassing the uh, the staff element, but just making sure that all proposals are deemed responsive and responsible and those ones effectively making it and you all making the decision as a board. Perfect. Um, and that's exactly where I was going because I think the very first iteration called for an evaluation committee to be appointed by the CRA board and you know, us saying that we approved the draft language. I want to know exactly does the draft language requires us to serve as the evaluation committee or is this a staff driven evaluation committee? So that's great to know. And I think that's really where I was actually going to arrive at who makes the actual rankings and selection. So, OK. I would like if I can, when you, Mr. Evans, has the procurement department to put this out. Well, I guess I'm on demand star, so I'll see it anyways. But, you know, I guess, yeah, it'd be great for us to see what exactly that finished product looks like. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And Mr. Evans, I, I guess that was uh, some of the sediments and based on the fiasco from uh, the agent of record conversation we had, making sure that this is clear for us and responsive and responsible is all that the, the selection board is going to be reviewing once these solicitations or these responses come back. And then this board will make the decision based on the rankings just for, I, I want to be completely yeah. clear. Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, our procurement team and the uh, procurement attorney will, will deem the, the proposal responsive and responsible. And then that items, those items will be packaged up and then facilitated, the presentations will be facilitated in a public forum. So there's not going to be, we're not going to be setting a committee or sitting a committee. It's going to be the internal review process to make sure that invariably they check all the boxes that are provided for. Uh, there's not going to be any scoring. It's just responsive and responsible. So yes or no. And then it moves to you all for ultimately a decision on and, and ranking on the proposals. Will there be a limited number? Or will all proposals be presented? If we have 10 proposals, are we going to be presented all 10 of them? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, with respect to that, um, hopefully that would be our, our cases that we do get 10. Uh, but in the event that we do um, receive those proposals, that will be a conversation I will have with board members from the standpoint that says, you know, we do have a voluminous number of proposals and, and how does the board wish to, to handle those particular uh, items. You can convene uh, such as other communities do and look at the proposals and then facilitate a subsequent meeting where only the top three, if you get 10, you review the 10. And then you can say the top three move on to the next step in the process whereby you'll take verbal presentation. So that it, it will be a little ebbs and flows depending on the nature of and how many proposals we do receive. Thank you. Additional comments from the commissioners? Mr. Chair. Uh, Dr. Spears, go ahead. Can we just explain what this property is? I don't think everyone here understands where the property is. This is the site. 2600 is a site on Blue Heron and Broadway, the vacant lot. Uh, where the bank building used to be and across the street the vacant lot all the way up to the smoothie stand correct correct okay yeah. just wanted to clarify that because a lot of people sitting here I don't think understood what, what parcels we were speaking about additional comments from the board um, yes chair commissioner let ahead. me ask what were some of the specific reasons why uh, proposals or proposers said that they did not want to submit for this particular project. Mr. Chair, Ms. Evans, go ahead. I would ask that um, Eric uh, from Lambert Advisory uh, responds to that. He's here in the audience and he's the one who discussed those issues. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Uh, hi, Eric Liff, Lambert Advisory. Um, again, we were helping to advise on the, um, the solicitations. As part of a, one, one of the, um, <clears throat> it was the second solicitation, uh, that we were doing some outreach to developers. There's, it's, there's two main challenges. One, it's density at 70 units. It's, uh, you know, there's a level of, or lack of level of critical mass, if you will, for many developers of size to come in and, 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 um, and facilitate development like this economically. Um, and then in light of that, as Scott had mentioned, 
the process of building density, you know, multifamily into 70 units with eight stories and having to include uh, structured parking, garage parking is, is very costly. And that financial gap is, uh, is too, too overwhelming. Uh, and at least at that time where there was not a clear understanding of how or if the, the city or CRA was going to participate. So it was really a financial and economic challenge and then the, and then the density. Commissioner Lanier. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to ask about the responsive and responsible proposals. Because of the issue we had at the last meeting regarding the agent of record, is there going to be any kind of fatal criteria included in the proposal process before it even gets to us or after it gets to us? Is there going to be something listed that says that if you don't have, um, you know, blue ink, then you won't go any further? And that was part of the evaluation methodology that you guys are supposed to use. So will you have that? That's what I'm asking. Mr. Chair. Mr. Evans, go ahead. Uh, yes, and if it's the board's pleasure, we will include, we will have procurement department include a checklist of everything that has to be submitted with language that says if there's something missing, they'll be deemed non-responsive. We can, we can ensure that that's included. Mr. Chair. Mr. Um, Mr. Evans, <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, um, with, with regards to the, the the proposal, obviously the evaluation criteria, the scope. If there are specific elements that are contained in those uh, documents that the board wants to deem as these are critical items that need to be contained, staff would certainly appreciate that direction uh, this evening, because. What we don't want is to have a situation where we deem something to be critical and this board says, well, that is something that I really wish I would have opined on or would have known. And so we want to make sure that we carry out what the desires of the board are. So if there are any items that you can point out in the actual uh, scope and in the evaluation criteria that you have, you would like to see as defined as critical in nature where a proposal will be deemed unresponsive, that would be very helpful to staff and the procurement team to facilitate the desires of the board. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Additional no comments for commissioners? I think one more question. I'm just Go thinking, ahead. so when you said at the time, so we cannot, we cannot, we cannot adjust the project to include more density? Is that what you're saying? Mr. Chair. Scott Evans, go ahead. The city would have to rewrite their zoning code in order to give those properties more height as they are. So we cannot offer more density at this time. The city council could choose to pause on issuing this opportunity um, and um, rewrite the city's zoning code. The problem is when you're looking at changing the code for one particular property, this the Department of Development Services would have to really study that impact on a citywide basis because any change you make to a particular zoning district applies wherever that zoning district is. So we could provide the opportunity that if they have more property that they could apply for a, a more dense project. Um, but, but we can't allow more density than the eight stories since that's all that's currently allowed by uh, code if they're just developing that property that's in the ITN. Mr. Chair, if I may. Uh, Commissioner Yoga, no, go ahead, Ms. Evans. Uh, Mr. Scott Evans, question for you with regards to what's provided for in code and how parking is an intricate part of structured parking is an intricate part. Is there a process that's provided for in the code whereby if there is a portion of the garage that is available for public parking, let's say, the first floor is available for public parking and then the other stories would be to facilitate whatever development activity. Is there any type of variance or any type of um, development tool that is provided for in the code where there's additional um, floor area ratios or densities that can be provided for in collaboration with accomplishing a bona fide public purpose? Mr. Chair. Mr. Evans, go ahead. Uh, uh, yes, we have, um, the code has exemptions for floor area ratio, which is basically a measurement of how much square footage you can build on a property. 
Uh, so it doesn't count that garage, uh, Mr. Evans, that you referenced um, against the amount of square feet that they can build on the property. So it is an exemption for public parking. However, there is no exemption for height. So we're, they would still be limited to that uh, maximum height li limit. Okay. Commissioner I, I was going to say, I, I, agree with, I, a, I agree with Mr. Evans. I think that this is a landmark project. You know, I said that it should be demolished and go into a private public partnership. It's going into Singer Island. It's right at the cusp of our new downtown. And I think that we should make exceptions to make sure that that project is, is available for someone to do it in a way that it may not fit the code, but we can work around that or what do we need to do to make sure that that happens? Because that certainly is a landmark area and project for the CRA and for that district. So I think that we do need to give it the time to be able to make some adjustments, variations, to ensure that that project, um, because if the main issues were height and density, then we need to look at that in terms of ensuring that someone can come in and do that project. Because if we go back, I mean, this is the third time and we haven't had any uh, bites at it. So if we make some adjustments, maybe we will. And that meaning density and that meaning height. Thank you, Commissioner Lanier. Uh, Mr. Scott Evans, what is the square footage of this parcel? The, I think it's just under an acre. So it's 0 0.9, 0 0.89 acres. 0.89? And to qualify for the IHC PUD would be a two acre parcel. So they'd need to acquire another 1.2 acres, 1.1 acres of land. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Mr. Chair. Mr. Spirit, Dr. Spirit, go ahead. So uh, Mr. Evans, so both sides add up to 0.89? The entire parcel? Mr. Chair, Evans, go ahead. Um, actually, they add up to a little bit more, Mr. Spiritus. They would add up to uh, the west side is 0.55 acres. So we would, uh, adding them together, they would approximately be about 1.4 acres. Okay. Does that include both sites? I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Does that include both sites? Yes. Mr. Chair, if I may. Mr. Jonathan Evans, go ahead. So, Mr. Evanson, in order to qualify for the greater density and intensity, is there a way that if they were to acquire, let's say, because it, it's contemplated that the development would incorporate both areas, is there a way that if they were to acquire another half an acre that's contiguous, that they can, in fact, transfer the development rights onto that parcel for the purposes of qualifying for greater densities and intensities? Mr. Chair. Scott Evans. Yes, if they could, I believe that if they got above the two acre minimum um, in total, that they could uh, proceed. Now, I guess the follow up. So, the reason I asked about the acreage is because the property to the west is uh, essentially across the street. It's not adjacent to the property, it's not contiguous to the properties. Is that going to be a conflict for the two acre requirement for the ICPUD? Because if we put that out there, because my two uh, thoughts and ideas are that if they can acquire an additional 0.5, that they can get the additional density. If not, what would be the contribution that we're looking to assist with parking? Because by the time that we bring a, bring a project, we're looking at about $40,000 $40, per sp spot to do public parking or even assist with offsetting. So the number of units at one spot per 70 units is going to be about $3 million. Um, we'd have to contribute to assist with offsetting that parking to do some type of affordable workforce housing component. Uh, dollar amount, is that going to be contemplated in this ITN that the CRA would be willing to contribute to this parcel if we do some type of affordable workforce unit? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Scott, let's go ahead. Uh, yes, the ITN says the CRA is willing to discuss a justified request what is for um, assistance with the cost of parking. What does that look like, justified request? Because I don't want it to be so arbitrary that... Uh, 50,000, 500,000, 5 million, like what is that justified request? Um, 
what what I intended by through and that that's language. without of, of course you know giving the the game room away and telling everything that we're trying to put out and what the CRA has to offer. But this is a third time, and we're we're very anxious about this solicitation because we want to see it developed. Uh, my colleague said that it's going to be a staple, but we want the development community to be clear that we will support and assist with getting it done, but we need a product that's going to match what we're trying to develop on our downtown corridor. Mr. Chair. Please. Um, what's meant by justified is that if they're going to request assistance with public parking, they just have to show us, uh, the, show the city a pro forma that shows that that in order for them to make a profit through the construction and development of this project that they require assistance with the parking just to ensure that the assistance for parking doesn't just go to additional profit that's just that's the requirement and we can clarify that in the itn if that's the board's direction i definitely want that cleaned up and clarified um because the performer showing that it's not just going to profit i just want that language to be Crystal clear. Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Dr. Spiritus, go ahead. Commissioner Spiritus. Mr. Evans, uh, do we permit parking to be within 500 feet of the site under the zoning? Is there is there a, a distance that we permit where it doesn't have to be adjacent? Uh, Mr. Chair. Scott Evans, go ahead. Yes. Um, for projects that are um, Doing development, they are allowed to provide uh, off-site parking. Uh, there is um, a length requirement, but I don't recall the exact number um, off for, from the zoning codes. But there is a length that if you're within a certain distance, you can provide off-site parking. Mr. Chair? So, so, so does that mean you would include that additional parking uh, on the other side? If they put parking where the... Uh, the smoothie and the uh, vacant land is in the pawn shop. If they put parking there, that would be included that site with the other site across the street? Mr. Chair. Mr. Scott Evans. Yes. Uh, if they had an integrated development that they could show how it worked, the parking could be on both sides. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Mr. Evans. So has the CRA considered purchasing any of the other adjacent sites, getting options maybe on them? Uh, before the RFP uh, goes out so that you can sell it as a two acre plus site. Go ahead, Mr. Scott. Sure. Yes, we have reached out to the adjacent property owners um, without much success, unfortunately. Um, in fact, uh, Lambert Advisory um, helped helped in that process. Also, they reached out to the different property owners and and perhaps they want to provide. Uh, the we actually order. spoke to several of the property owners around the 2600 property. Um, unfortunately, there was just not much of a response, um, particularly for those properties that are, are most strategic to the redevelop to the development. Uh, they just were not coming to the table, so it made it uh, just that that much more complicated. But they were not responding or responsive at that time. This was about a year ago, a little bit over. Yeah. Please, that's well, right. maybe you ought to reach out again because times are changing. Mr. Chair, there is a question. Mr. Jonathan Evans, go ahead. Yeah, we, we can certainly uh, facilitate that conversation and see if there is an appetite. Uh, the other side of it is, um, Mr. Evans, it's my understanding, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, with respect to any roadway or water body or what have you, that doesn't um, eliminate continuity as it relates to parcels. I don't know if a roadway, so when we talk about a being, and about an acre and a half that you would in fact get the credit for the acre and a half, even though it is across the street. So if they were to buy parcels that would be across the street to get the two acre mass, that would still count, correct? Please. Mr. Chair. Yes, I believe so. If Yeah, then that, that was my question. So if we just get that clarity, because then that uh, limits the number of parcels. So it would only be an additional about 0.5 acres, which is possibly, um, easier to obtain uh, if it's going to be adjacent to or contiguous with the other property in 2600. Okay. Additional comments from the board, commissioners? Just one more. Commissioner Lanier, go ahead. <laughs> Just one more. I think that uh, this should be the highest and best use. Now, affordable housing and, and, and workforce housing is fine, but for that particular landmark site, I do not think that we need to go that route. There are other uh, properties in the city that we can do that. I think that this to encourage and to get more TIF that we need to look at excluding those particular types of housing for this particular project.
Sure, if I may. Mr. Uh, certainly in the solicitation uh, document, we will provide for maximum flexibility. But one of the things that why this item came back before the board is because uh, originally we said that we wanted to go with a market rate product, and that is quite challenging. But it, so this may be something that you may see a mix of affordable elements to it, but we do want to allow for you all to entertain the proposals and ultimately make the determination as you as what you think and which development team brings the best um, proposal for your consideration. So we do want to provide for great flexibility with regards to the solicitation document because there may be something and a mixture that the board is amenable to versus a situation where we we look to um, to go forward with with highest and best use. We do want to provide for you know maximum opportunities for you to make a decision as to what you think is is needed on that corner. Chair. Oh, one second, Dr. Spiders. Commissioner Lanier? That's, that's fine. Dr. Spiders, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Evans, has the CRA considered doing a new overlay zone uh, along Broadway? Uh, because you're going to have many parcels that are going to be in the same situation as this, uh, where you might want to, in the overlay zone, uh, permit certain things if there's certain public benefits uh, or other inducement opportunities. Mr. Chair. Mr. Scott Evans. Uh, yes, the CRA is planning to update all of the city's uh, downtown zoning regulations. We have um, been waiting for the city's comprehensive plan process to be completed before we then um, do those implementing guidelines. Um, so we have considered that and we could uh, develop that if it's the board's wish um, or make sure that those draft um, changes include that type of overlay thank you and i would be in agreement with mr jonathan evans leaving as much as much flexibility as possible uh with the market rate or the workforce affordable housing component uh, there's a lot of dollars and funding available for housing um, even a possible hotel uh, unit uh hotel or condo uh mix so leaving those flexible for the development community to come in and maximize on the parcel at the eight story density that we have while we at the same time are trying to secure the additional parcel. So leaving that flexibility that we can possibly qualify for the IACPUD if additional parcels are still secured, but not just restricting to a, a market rate because I do understand we want to address our TIF and bring in some additional dollars. Um, but I think that we can really maximize with the development community with the dollars available through a workforce unit and still come out with a beautiful project. Just three stores, uh, three streets north of that, we have Berkeley Landing that will be doing a ribbon cutting, and that's a beautiful project. I just wish we had a higher density on that. So those are some of the things that I'd love to see on Broadway as we develop and still give the flexibility of workforce and market rate and possibly even a hotel mix. Sure. Dr. Spears, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Evans, all, all I ask is that you consider the live local law and the impact of taxes uh, with reference to that with any zoning or anything that you permit? Mr. Chair. Mr. Scott Evans, go ahead. Uh, yes, we, we, can, we can have a look at that. Um, in fact, we'll have an attorney look at that since that's a tri tricky item for us, to, for cities to deal with as far as how that law affects cities. And I think there's a lot of cities dealing with that challenge. So we will consult a, an attorney on that. Thank you. Additional comments, Commissioners? Commissioner McCoy? Yes, so great points that was brought up. Um, you know, it, it seems very interesting that we're having this conversation. And I do recall, I think, not the last time, but the time before, we had about five or six respondents, um, varying different proposals. But, you know, we have to kind of keep in mind what's the exit play of Mr. Mr. Scott Evans and Mr. Johnson Evans with 15 years left in the CRA, you know, I don't know what kind of, I can tell you, I don't believe we have discretionary cash to be able to fund these kind of projects with a sunset date of 15 years from now. You know, how do we, in the chairperson's uh, perspective, fund $40,000 parking spaces for a project that, you know, is going to ultimately either has to be, be, purchased out or sold out at, at the end of the 15 year mark or what have you, you know, or become indebted to the city. So, you know, I don't know that I want to front load this deal because there's not much time left in the CRA. 
So we got to certainly keep in mind um, that. And um, that's just not true for this item. I would say it for the next item on the agenda and all the other development projects. I, I, I think I, you know, I'll share with the board that I, you know, I called you today. It's like, yo, what are we doing with the Marina project? I mean, it's approaching six years. This solicitation went out in 2018, the summer of 2018. We're about to approach that right now. So, um, you know, I, I think we need to be cognizant that the, the CRA is set to sunset and we can't sit here and uh, have unfettered, um, you know, without any kind of real plan as to what we're doing and we're setting forth all of these projects and when we have a a, a certain a very certain sunset date and the legislature has pretty much made it clear um that cras won't exist at least certainly not in the current fashion maybe ddas or something of the sort but in its current position or in its current form they you know we won't be here in 15 years operating as a cra thank you mr chair thank you just no comments, commissioners? I actually absolutely agree with uh, Vice Chair McCoy in regards to front loading these items. So we have to really be conscious of the decisions we're making with our CRA right now. And we have to get really aggressive right now, guys. So additional comments, commissioners? Thank you. Madam Clerk? Commissioner Mella Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Spiritus? Yes. Vice Chair McCoy? Yes. Chair Lawson? Yes. That vote passes five to zero. Thank you. 7B. Resolution number 2024-10, approving a partnership between the CRA and CDC to provide affordable housing on vacant infill properties while allowing the CDC to proceed with receiving a grant for a million dollars to facilitate the housing projects. The acceptance of public comment cards are now closed. Mr. Chair, we have one comment card. Motion. So moved. Motion is made. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Evans. Mr. Chair, members of the board, if I can have the Director of Neighborhood Services, Ms. Anita Jenkins, and both, as well as Mr. Scott Evans, to make this presentation. Mr. Chair. Mr. Evans. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening again, members of the board and, and uh, Mayor. The, uh, this is request is we're requesting to pursue a partnership with the Community Development Corporation, uh, which would allow the CRA to provide uh, six uh, residential lots uh, to be utilized by the CDC uh, to develop infill uh, home ownership opportunities. Um, so the resolution would allow staff uh, to then proceed with developing that, that um, partnership. The CDC has received a grant for $1 million uh, which will allow them uh, through a revolving fund to construct those residential uh, home, op uh, home ownership opportunities. Um, so we're proposing uh, this partnership. Uh, if it moves forward based on the board's direction this evening, uh, that would allow us to advertise the our intent to sell those, uh, provide those properties to the CDC through that partnership. Um, and I, and, uh, I believe they are partial, partially through the process of uh, the underwriting for the, the $1 million grant that would allow the CDC to complete this. And, and I'll let that, with that, I'll let Ms. Ania Jenkins provide more detail. Good evening, uh, Chair Lawson, Vice Chair, Commissioners, Mayor, and Mr. Evans. Thank you for this opportunity to come and talk about an infill housing opportunity on vacant uh, lots that are underutilized in our community. The CRA has six lots and the CDC actually has acquired two others that uh, could go into this program. Uh, knowing that we were in housing crisis in Palm Beach County and actually in the state of Florida, Florida Housing Finance Corporation uh, released a um, um, notice for a pilot infill home ownership program. I'd like to introduce the other partners in this project uh, wherein we successfully submitted our um, development proposal and it was accepted and it actually scored the highest in the state. 
In the audience behind me, I have Ms. Linda Charles with Community Partners, uh, who is also our partner in the Rivera Beach uh, Home Buyers Club. Linda, if you could stand up. Uh, Mr. Harold Davidson, who is the uh, president of the HBR group. And Mr. Daryl Leonard is the, is the chairperson for the CDC. Uh, we applied, um, we were successful and the evaluation and our project was recommended into underwriting by Florida Housing Finance Corporation. Uh, we received the max of a million dollars, which will be a revolving facility. We additionally have applied for and received another half million dollars to assist us in developing these homes. Uh, we have the ability under this program to do up to 15 homes. They'd love for us to do it, but unfortunately, um, that number of lots are not available to us. There were some critical threshold items um, that we met in terms of the experience category and the fact that lots had to be donated into the program. Uh, we have buyers who've expressed uh, interest. They've given us letters of interest to uh, purchase the homes on these lots. And um, the builder developer is ready to submit for permits once we go through the successful uh, disposition process with the CRA. And we um, do intend to follow the disposition process um, to make sure that it's public, transparent, and fair. And I will stop there and take any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Jenkins and Mr. Evans. Comments from commissioners? Commissioner McCoy. Thank you. Ms. Jenkins, why do we need a partnership? That was one of the uh, threshold criteria. They were interested in collaborations. A meaning Florida Finance? Florida Housing Finance Corporation. Okay. Um, so do you need that prior to, I guess, uh, site control? I'm sorry, do we need, I don't understand what you're asking, do we need what? That, that's exactly what I'm about to say. I don't understand why we're here. You're asking us for a partnership. Aren't we already partners? Um, the CRA was did not submit as part of the application. We mentioned the possibility and opportunity for the lots, but we're here asking to start, uh, for the CRA to start the disposition process. We're in underwriting and we have to demonstrate site control uh, before we can complete underwriting. Okay, so if you have to demonstrate site control, what does this partnership do? Because this partnership and this resolution means absolutely nothing. The resolution says we're gonna be partners. There's not an agreement. There's not a proposed development agreement. Help me understand why we're asking for this first. Sorry. Mr. Chair. Mr. Scott Evans, go ahead. Um, the, the process that the CRA would go through as a part of that proposed pro uh, partnership, uh, well, the main thing would be to provide the properties. But in doing so, uh, some of the properties would need survey work done. Uh, the transaction to actually transfer them from the CRA to the CDC, that legal transaction, we would re be required to do, um, have them all uh, appraised. Um, so there's a process and there's there's some legal work. There's uh, has to be advertised. Um, so the survey, the, the appraisals, uh, through this partnership, the CRA would complete that work uh, so that when the lots are provided to the CDC, they all have surveys uh, and appraisals, which I believe would help with the development process also. Thank you. Go ahead, Council Commissioner. Oh, thank you. So, Mr. I, I, again, I'm not sure if you explain why we need this partnership. Is it so that the CRA can move forward with those surveys and that sort of thing? Because truly, if we are a dependent district, a dependent special district of the city, why aren't we using the same process that's prescribed on the city's resolution that we adopted? Because the city doesn't particularly incur costs associated with the disposition of properties, similar to what we just experienced over at the housing authority. So why are we entering into a partnership and then we're responsible for paying for it? If we're going to be generous enough to consider 
conveying six lives? Why wouldn't the CDC be doing the site work and that sort of thing? Because truthfully, I don't care to spend the CRA's money to turn it over exclusively to one person. If we're going to do that, then I would make it available for proposals to come in for us to then make it available for anybody. I mean, it's great that they got a million dollars, but I see a double standard here because when well, actually I got on the city council shirt, but when I put on the hat of a city council member, there's a whole different prescribed process. And I just want to understand, number one, does Florida Finance Housing Corporation require a partnership or is this something that we're looking to do internally because this satisfies us the need to spend CRA dollars? Mr. Chair, it's got to be that's, Wait, let me make sure I'm clear. Ahead, There's only two answers to this question. <clears throat> Florida Finance requires it or is this for us to expend monies as a CRA? That's all I'm looking for, Mr. Scott Evans. Save me with all that other stuff. I just want a very clear answers because I just hate that we're here a month later talking about the same exact thing, but there's a whole nother different criteria when it comes to the CDC compared to what the housing authority had to go to. So very simple. Florida finance requires it or the CRA wants to do it. Scott, Mr. Chair, it's proposed as a partnership because the CRA would like to assist the CDC. Mr. Chair. Uh, go ahead, Attorney Smith. If I can, um, Councilperson, under 163, as you know, the disposition of property, you do have to advertise it, and it will be open for other groups to come in with a proposal for the aforementioned properties. So this is not an exclusive. Under under this, we'll enter into an agreement with the CDC based upon being able to get the properties. But under the Florida law, once we advertise those properties, you will have to consider any other pro any other um, uh, proposals that come in as a board, consider any other proposals before the disposition of the property to the CDC. Thank you, Attorney Smith. Commissioner McCoy. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Smith, thank you for following up. I brought this up, members, yesterday because I just was completely shocked when I heard this during the gender review that we literally have a whole much easier standard. And that's exactly where I'm at. You know, I sat down and I went back through and I reviewed all of the different things that we require from the Florida excuse me, from the Riviera Beach Housing Authority. Um, it went through a departmental review. We had to have a consensus vote. We had to authorize by resolution the ability for staff to hire counsel to draft a development agreement. Then we put out a public notification. And now, right now, the development agreement, I understand, is negotiated. And then there's other provisions for reverter. And we are set to approve that, I believe, on the 17th. But what we have here, I just don't understand why we were putting the cart before the horse that we want a partnership. I think a partnership already exists because even in the memo that was provided, the CDC has already completed houses and it even referenced that we did this back in 2017. So, you know, I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression. And even, you know, I, you know, I certainly appreciate community partners in HB, HBR, but the truth is, you know, I think we need to, be consistent in our practices across both the city and the CRA. That's why I'm not going to be able to support this because when you look at a resolution, a resolution should set for what the intent of this legislative body is. And this re resolution, all it says is that we're going to be partners. I thought we already had that understanding in, in relationship. So, I, you know, unless I'm missing something, I, I'm, I'm not seeing why we would enter into a partnership before we first done our due diligence and make this available for any other organization. Thank you, Commissioner McCoy. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Can I do an uh, exit, Mr. Evans, uh, before we go on? Are you going to be responsive to Commissioner McCoy? Yes. General Con Please, go ahead. Um, we felt it was important to get this board's direction before the CDC proceeded down the path of going through the underwriting uh, on these lots. Uh, so the, I would think the main purpose of uh, our discussion tonight is to see if the board wanted to provide those lots so the CDC could utilize their $1 million grant to build the homes. So yes, the resolution references partnership. Um, I don't think it had to use that word. I think the, the question was, should we proceed and spend the time to do the work to um, make these lots available potentially to the CDC? That, at, the, at the end of the day, that's the key uh, response that we were hoping to get from the board, whether we should continue to pursue this. 
Mr. Chair, if I may. Mr. Jonathan Evans. With respect to the, the process, um, you all remember that the Housing Authority did present an item to the board um, at the request of the board to facilitate the possibility of consummating the relationship on the Judge Rogers Center. Um, and the board provided us direction that they wanted us to move forward with the partnership with the Housing Authority. And after that directive, then staff moved forward with the subsequent actions. So this is no different from the same process in which the Housing Authority uh, is moving forward with now. With respect to the utilization of funds, obviously in the policy, it does provide for uh, how we are to surplus property and dispose of property and the like. But it is the same situation before we were to entertain this. It was, do, does the board wish to pursue this avenue? And if not, then obviously then there's another process that we would have looked to undertake for the disposition of these particular parcels. So it is seeing if the board does have the appetite to consummate the relationship for the purposes of facilitating this housing development. Thank you, Mr. Evans. And uh, commissioners, I do apologize. We have a public comment card on this item. Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, Dr. Spears, go ahead. Okay. And Madam Clerk, how many public comment cards do we have? Mr. Chair, we have one public comment card. Okay. Well, go ahead, Dr. Spears first. Mr. Chair, uh, Ms. Jenkins, is there a deadline uh, for this million dollar grant to have this agreement finalized? The project has already been referred to underwriting, and we have to continue to move forward in underwriting. And if we don't show diligence of moving forward, then we give up our opportunity for the monies and they go to number two. So uh, we've been given, what's, if you've done projects with Florida Housing Finance Corporation, uh, an underwriting checklist, and this is um, um, a critical step in terms of moving forward. And in terms of the cost for the appraisal, et cetera, um, the partnership, let me not use that word, the collaboration of the entities who applied have no problem in including the amount for the appraisal in the development budget and covering that cost. So it is not ultimately at the end of the day a cost to the CRA. We would not be able to undertake an appraisal on property we do not own or have site control of. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Jenkins. Go ahead, Dr. Uh, just one more comment. Uh, I just have to disclose that I was a member of the CDC board previously. I just want to get that on the record. Thank you. Uh, if we can do public comment. Mr. Chair. Please. One public comment card, Erica Davis. Welcome, Ms. Davis. How are you doing? Happy birthday. Thank you, love. Erica Davis, Riviera Beach. This is why the CRA needs to be abolished. Because every time we have a very important project coming up, it seems to get a little confused and convoluted when it comes to voting. And it gets a little personal as well, because I'm, I'm, I'm watching and observe, I'm observing it too. If you all follow the standards of the procurement process, we wouldn't have to be going through all these problems. And I think that we should have a separate board for the CRA so it won't be convoluted or confused. You all have been up here for six years. Nothing has gotten done over there, but a, what maybe one thing you've held up to see this project here that we're standing on for seven years. No, eight's going on eight years because it was convoluted. You didn't follow the process. You put your personal feelings into it. We have to move this city forward. You should have a standard for your procurement process. Don't amend anything. Don't modify anything. Stick to the plan, the process, so we can get the stuff done. If the man says that the building is eight stories and that's it, that's what we need. Mr. Evans, we need to get an environmental man in here to, for the study of these tall buildings. They're not even questioning about the hurricanes and the climate change that we have and how we have, pothole, we have potholes in the streets. I'm sorry, Ms. Davis, it's the CDC and the- Okay, well, CDC, well, it, it, it's with everything. 
but you all need to get this together with the policies because it doesn't make any sense. Like she said, you did something the same for the, for, uh, the housing authority, which shouldn't even get that project, but I got, I'm coming back for public comments. But you all need to get this procurement process together and stick to a standard. Not what you want, it's the process. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Mr. Chair, that's the end of public comment cards. Additional comments, commissioners? Madam Clerk? Commissioner Miller Anderson? I'm, I'm sorry, hold, hold that. Commissioner, <coughs> Commissioner Coy, go ahead. I, I was trying to move, and I know we required this. Um, Mr. Evans? Either Mr. Evans, I, I want to see a copy of the development proposal. Did we represent to the Florida Finance Housing that we had site that CDC had site control, or was it represented? No. Okay. Other than for the two lots that the CDC owned, yeah, I we did see. identify lots within the CRA that were owned. And as you know, um, other lots were disposed of, and the CRA has the six lots left. Okay, I, I just am curious to see how this is going to work because we require, I mean, well, actually, we didn't require. I know we went and endeavored to get the proposal from the housing, from Palm Beach County that belonged to the housing authority. So I certainly would like to see what that's about. But again, this partnership does absolutely nothing. Without this partnership, I mean, approving this partnership doesn't give site control. I mean, I don't see how this stops anything. Um, I would like to see more in terms of us having um, the public notification to go out. I mean, if this fails today, and I'm going to be optimistic for the sake of the time that was put in by Ms. Jenkins and her team, but this doesn't preclude site, uh, staff from going forward with the disposition of these properties, would it? With notification? We We'd require the board to give direction to staff to do notification for these properties. See, but then that's where I get to be confused at because that's not what the resolution says. This resolution should be about let us as a CRA decide to give staff the direction to give public notification of the disposition of these parcels, not the partnership. And I think this is where it gets confused because later, right, we're going to come back and say, well, you guys entered into the polish partnership with the expectation that we we're going to give these six properties. I think if that's the case, then we need to be very clear that we're going to give staff the direction of doing the public notification of the Florida Statutes Chapter 163 that we intend on disposing of surplus property. I don't understand still after explanation that this partnership means anything because you just established yourself, Mr. Smith, that if this is not successful, staff can still proceed forward. And I want to make sure that I'm fair and uniform. So, you know, either we need to decide to amend this or we can vote on it with the assumptions or or with the understanding that it doesn't matter. Staff can still decide to move forward with the direction from the board as to disposing of these six parcels. Mr. Chair. Dr. Spears, go ahead. I would like to make a motion that we table this resolution and or amend the resolution uh, for the board to give staff a consensus to move forward with disposing of the parcels and come back to us at a later date for a partnership with the CDC. Check it. Mr. Scott Evans. Um, thank you. The I guess the, the only thing I want to uh, raise as a concern is it's the goal of the CRA to develop affordable housing and home ownership opportunities. So I would just uh, make the comment that if we were going to allow disposition of our properties instead of uh, developing them ourselves or, or with a, a different partner, uh, that if we're going to make those properties available, that we somehow ensure that they're used for uh, affordable housing. That's thank you. Mr. Chair. So, uh, Dr. Spears, go ahead. So, uh, I'm agreeing with uh, uh, Board Member uh, McCoy uh, that I think we have to follow through the process and be consistent with the process. I don't think we're saying we don't want to possibly eventually become partners with the CDC on this project. I think we just want to follow through on the process and be consistent.
Sure. Commissioner Lanier. Um, I do like the project. You know, I've, al I've always had some heartburn about the arm's length with the CDC and the CRE um, and how that whole process works. CDE, CDC, CRA. Sometimes it gets very, very confusing in terms of arm's length and who's doing what. So I, I agree with the fact that we need to make sure that we are following what it is that we have written in terms of the process to be able to make sure that this applies to everybody, not just to, you know, one process for this particular entity and, and the other process for another entity. So I agree with the fact that we need to table this, um, move forward the way that anybody else would move forward in terms of uh, entities involved with such matters. So yeah, I, I I do have the problem with the arms length, but I do support the project. Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh um, I, I do want to kind of comment and agree with Mr. Evans in terms of making sure that we do hold true to making sure that this is some sort of affordable housing project. Um, this is the area that is off of Broadway, which is an area that we're trying to develop. We're trying to make sure that it's a livable area. Um, right now, a lot of those vacant lots are being utilized as illegal dumping. Um, you have, you know, the homeless population moving into the area. Some of them are setting up tents on these properties. Um, and so we want to make sure that we, we have an opportunity now to make sure that we're able to provide some affordable housing in these areas. And um, as long as we're going to continue to move in that direction with these properties, I can support that um, in terms of the process. I have no issue with that. Um, I know that the CDC has done an outstanding job in the Riviera Beach Heights area in terms of um, bringing affordable housing to those areas. And so I know that it's something they have a track record of being able to do that. And so I, I have no issue. I do want to go on record that I have no issue with working as a partner in terms of working with them on these projects here. But if it's the board's desire to, and when you say table, that's kind of indefinite. What well, I mean, or how are we just dismissing it, or with the the term table? Are we tabling? You you mean table or postpone? Because there are two different things. So, Mr. Chair, if, if uh, I can, Attorney Smith, go ahead. I can help with this. So I, I think the the will of the board is would it be to table this resolution. So and then after tabling the resolution then we'd need direction from the board of what to do. Um, as simple as we're going to, under Chapter 163, notice disposition of these properties, and I would enumerate the properties for the record. And then once you, once you give staff direction to go under 163, under disposition of properties, then what they would do is advertise the properties and receive within 30 days proposals for the properties. The proposal could come from the CDC as well as anybody else that has a plan for the properties. Then as a board, you'd have to determine which proposal you like the best. It wouldn't be uh, by cost or anything, but according to the goals and the aspirations of the CDC, you of the CRA, you would determine which one you want to go with. And then if you still decide, we think the process, the proposal by the CRA, the CDC is the best, then you determine and we'd go into the partnership with them. But right now, if the, the move would be to table this, but still give staff direction on these seven properties under 163 to begin the notification process for disposition of the properties. Okay. Attorney Smith, was that just the clear way of how this board is supposed to proceed with these parcels? Was that the outline direction of dispositioning these six parcels, allowing for additional bids to come in and then having other partners make presentations, yes, the CDC is one option. Yes, sir. So why was that not presented to this board originally? Mr. Chair. Uh, hold on, Attorney Smith. Um, I, I, it was brought to us as a contract for to to enter into a partnership with the CDC. I understand, but that's not, not a contract. contract. Not a contract. Yeah, I mean, not a contract. There's nothing in here that says contract. And I think that's the entire board's frustration. And now I'm seeing the concern, and that's where I want us to be very clear. We gave clear direction to staff to uh, expedite the process of development. 
so they took the initiative to get this done, partnering with the CDC. But it looks like we're superseding the actual process that you're supposed to follow and just bringing it to the board to go into a partnership or a handshake agreement with the CDC without following the proper steps. And this is kind of a waste of our time when it could have just brought to us originally as a disposition of these six properties and allow for the CDC. Sure. Mr. Scott Evans, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to clarify we were always proposing to follow the standard process. Um, I believe um, I believe the city's economic development manager is here, uh, Sarah Maxfield, um, and she can confirm if I'm incorrect, but I believe what happened on the city's side is they advertised their intent to make the properties available to the housing authority. And that that advertisement was, was how the process proceeds, the normal process. So I, it was my, what I believe is, so if we advertised our intent to make the properties available to the CDC as the, the advertisement, we couldn't do that without board direction. So we were going to follow the process um, as is required by state statute. But in order to make that advertisement, we're, the CRA wanted to accomplish affordable housing. Um, so in order to advertise that we intended to provide them to the CDC, uh, we needed this board's approval. So I, I don't think we were following any process that we wouldn't normally follow or that, or that the city didn't follow, um, but we needed this board's direction. And what I've heard tonight is the board uh, does support us putting those properties available, but not with the commitment to the CDC. And no, Mr. Chair. That's, that's actually not... <laughs> well, me personally, Mr. Scott Evans, I'm very supportive with the CDC. I just want to make sure that we're following the proper process and because they have the grant available and the funding and the dollars ready. Uh, Commissioner um, uh, Miller Anderson and the mayor. I will say when we had a conversation, I did my agenda review, um, that was always clear to me because I did ask and they said they would be following the process. So that was never my understanding that they were not going to advertise it because I asked that question. Is this <clears throat> basically saying it's going to the CDC? And I was told by Ms. Jenkins that it would follow the process. It would be advertised to everyone. But, um, you know, because like Mr. Scott Evans just said, we have a, a goal of trying to make sure that the CRA supports affordable housing. It's for us to get a di give direction that we would want to do that with them. Um, so, but yeah, I do support it. Um, but if the will of the board, majority of the board wants to go a different direction, then I support moving forward. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner Evans. Mayor? <laughs> Mr. Evans, are these lots, um, MV6 lots, are the lots that we gave to the housing authority or they're different lots, if they're lots? They're, uh, Mr. Chair, We're not I given, may, but that they had on. They're, they're different lots. They're, different. they're lots that are owned by the CRA. The city uh, made a decision to give all the city lots to the housing authority. Okay, so they're separate. They're separate. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Jonathan. Uh, w with regards to that, and, and it's been talked about in this meeting with respect to the process, I, I do want to again reiterate the point that staff has made is that the process in which staff is, is following is the same exact process that in which the housing authority is moving forward with in the event that we are to go out and advertise and say we have six parcels available for affordable housing, it is not consistent with the same action that the board took as it relates to the housing authority. So I just wanna make sure that, that it's abundantly clear that we would be looking to dispose of these parcels with the understanding that the city wants to see affordable housing and the advertisements would not be as the same as was provided for in the situation with the housing authority additionally too that this item was placed on the agenda and, and agenda and was posted for a period of seven days whereby the proposal that was received by the housing authority was provided for at that particular meeting so there was additional steps in the process that staff followed on the cra side and so if we're going to find consistency and uniformity it would be to follow the process in which the the housing authority moved forward with as it relates to those parcels. Additional comments from the board? All right. Um, Commissioner Spirit. Can we just clarify what we're voting yeah. on? Okay. Commissioner Spirit has made a motion and uh, Commissioner Lanier seconded. Um, Madam Clerk, if you could restate Commissioner Spirit's motion, please. 
The motion was to table the item. Um, according to attorney um, Chris Smith, he asked for directions from the board on disposition on the proposed and to also include a proposal to return back to the board to decide. This would just be, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. But this would just, this vote would just be to table the item. And then I request a discussion after. Thank you. And um, just discussion now from the board. I would not want to table the item. Uh, what I want to do is just give staff clear direction. And uh, based upon the discussion and dialogue, I believe that we can still proceed with this position of these properties. But this partnership, from my understanding, is is not something that was necessary essentially, but Mr. Jonathan Evans is saying that this is the same steps we took with the housing authority. So that's just the clear direction for why we're here tonight with this item. Um, I want us to proceed. I would be in support of supporting the CDC, but I do want us to follow the process of notifying the disposition of these parcels. There's no comments? Sure. Mr. Dr. Spader, let's go ahead. All right, so I, I think what we're, at least what I was trying to get to was to table the item and get a consensus from the board to move forward and to have uh, the CRA staff move forward with the process and then come back to us with uh, a recommendation and for us to adopt a proposal, maybe a development agreement uh, with the CDC uh, at, at a future meeting. So I think, we, I think we, we want, what we're looking for is to get a consensus from the board to give directive uh, to the to the CRA staff uh, to move forward with the disposition of the property, uh, and then to put out an RFP or come back to us with a uh, development uh, agreement with the CDC for us to vote on. But Dr. Spears, if that's what you desire, that's what this resolution is asking for. Yes. So it would not be to table the resolution; it would be to proceed with this resolution. They would enter into an agreement with the CDC. It, the agreement would not um, give them the properties unless, until we go through the process. But this will direct staff to go ahead and start putting together an agreement with the CDC that still has to come back to you to be approved after we know what we can do with the property. This would only authorize them to begin that process. If you table this and we're just doing the notification of, the, um, uh, of disposition, then they will not be talking to the CDC. We will just do the notices then after the 30 days, and after you come back and you say, okay, well, we like the pro process with CDC, now start talking with them. All this does is start the conversation while we're still noticing. So from what you just described, you're describing what you would want in this resolution. Mr. Chair, if I... Mr. John Thomas. The, the notice that was provided for the item with, with regards to the housing authority provided the, the city's desire to convey the parcels to the housing authority for the purposes of facilitating affordable housing. So if there is a situation whereby the, the partnership is consummated with the, with the CDC, it would move in that particular vein. If not, the notice would be the, CR, the Riviera Beach CRA is intending to dispose of these parcels for the purposes of affordable housing. And this is the window in which, and this is where you submit your proposals and the like. And so I did want to make sure that there is, is clarity with respect to the, the the options before the board and ultimately obtain direction as to how you wish to proceed. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Dr. Peters. Uh, so, so Mr. Evans, so you're basically saying that if we were to adopt this resolution, we would be following the same process we did with the housing authority. Mr. Chair, if I may. Correct. Mr. Evans, go ahead. Yes. We would we would advertise the parcels <laughs> that it would be the CRA's intent to convey these parcels to the CDC for the purposes of affordable housing and that in this 30-day window that we would be accepting proposals from any other entities that would be in. If we get uh, proposals, then that would ultimately come back before this board for consideration. Mr. Chair. Dr. Spiders, go ahead. So, so Mr. Evans, so with the housing authority, did the city pay any cost before the development uh, agreement or because I believe the housing authority paid a substantial amount of money uh, to get to that point in the development agreement. Uh, did the city pay any money or? Mr. Chair, if I may. 
Sounds good. Uh, the city did not start incurring costs associated with it until the item was brought before the board at your last meeting. As we're working towards a development agreement now, now we are facilitating expenditures to to move forward in that that relationship. So, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. So, basically, what we're saying now is that the the staff of the CRA is asking to expend money to do this before the development agreement, correct? Mr. Mr. Evans. I, I believe in this, and, and definitely Ms. Jenkins and Mr. Evans, um, if you can provide additional commentary, that it is a request to expend monies for the purposes of uh, certain costs, but what is the cost associated for that? Mr. Chair. Mr. Evans, go ahead. Um, the cost associated with that would be an appraisal, which we would get for all of the lots in one appraisal. That would cost approximately ten to twelve thousand, um, and then surveys at about four hundred dollars uh, to five hundred dollars per lot, uh, and then the advertisement in the newspaper. That's the extent. But, Mr. Chair, if I may, so, wouldn't those wouldn't it be that be the process if we were going to facilitate the disposition of these parcels to the general public or to other developers? Wouldn't we concede with the same process to expend monies to to do that, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, whether this uh, whether we made them publicly available or developed them ourselves, we would still incur those costs. Yes. And Mr. Chair, in, in the city's case, we do we also do appraisals as well for, for, for our parcels. Mr. Chair. Dr. Spinners, go ahead. Okay. I, I would withdraw my motion if uh, uh, Board Member Lanier will withdraw her second and move forward with the existing resolution as long as the uh, CRA staff follow suit with the recommendations and the direction of the board. Motion to withdraw additional comments, commissioners. Madam Clerk, roll call. Commissioner Spiritus has withdrawn his motion. Councilwoman Lanier. We're gonna be voting on the resolution. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Mella Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner Spiritus? Yes. Vice Chair McCoy? Yes. Chair Lawson? Yes. That vote passes five to zero. Thank you. Mr. Chair, go ahead. Just clarifying. <clears throat> I, you know, I, I don't want to be Debbie Downer and I wanted to support us moving forward, but you know, we, we need to wordsmith these resolutions correctly because this says, the Riviera Beach CRA authorizes the execution of a partnership between the agency and the CDC to provide affordable houses on vacant infill properties. It lists out the street addresses. And then it says, comma, allowing the CDC to proceed with receiving a grant for $1 million to facilitate the housing projects. That last sentence means absolutely nothing. That has nothing to do with us as a, as a CRA agency. Allowing them to proceed with receiving the grant is not a function of the agency. That's between them and Florida Finance Housing Corporation. So, you know, it makes it very confusing, right? This isn't an agreement. There's not a contract. It's a partnership. So at the same time, I, I you know, the mayor's my partner for all intents and purposes. I mean, that's like, it, 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 a partnership has no binding authority on anybody. So I don't understand why we set up here and had an hour worth of discussions about a partnership, which means absolutely nothing. The CDC has no legal recourse. We have no legal recourse against them. You know, this is no different. I mean, you have more legal binding authority with an MOU than a partnership. A partnership means absolutely nothing. There's nothing that's set forth any duties or responsibilities by any party. What should have been better, and I have to agree with Councilperson, excuse me, Chair Lawson, that there should have been something more intentional as to what the expectation is. But, you know, I just hope this is a, a, a teachable moment that we need to be succinct because what really matters is not the memo. It matters the resolution that we just voted on. And I just want to make sure that we're not spending a lot of energy when, you know, we've been partners already. You know, the first six homes came through from properties that was, you know, through a partnership with the CDC. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Madam Clerk, do we have public comments? Mr. Chair, we do have public comment cards. How many public comment cards do we have? We have here? five comment cards. Comments from the public shall begin at 7.30 unless there's no further business of the of the city council, of the CRA board, which in the event it shall begin sooner. In addition, if it's considered at 7.30, then public comments from the public shall begin immediately following. Please be reminded the CRA board of commissioners has adopted rules of decorum governing public comment during official meetings, which has been posted at the front desk. In an effort to preserve order, if any rules are not adhered to, commissioner chair may have any disruptive speaker or attendee removed from the podium, meeting, or building. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Madam Clerk. Erica Davis, followed by Shannon Barak. Erica Davis, Riviera Beach. Let me speak on the, C, the uh, housing authority. That property that's on 11th Street, they're only paying a dollar a year. And they're receiving rent from the tenants. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Lawson, since you are a fraternity man, your organization is not supposed to collect any kind of revenue, right? Okay. So now we have the housing authority that wants to get that land, right? For a dollar. What are we getting out of that? When you have a building here in the state on Congress that has had several complaints, several, and I'm sure you've gotten some, all of you, and no one has addressed that issue before you go giving out free property for them to develop again. You need to go and check the quality of what they've done before and how they're operating that apartment complex. You all need to start doing your research before you start acting on anything out of desperation. Yes, the election season is coming up. But you don't have to be in an alarm if you're doing the right thing and doing your homework and doing what you're supposed to do and stop delaying projects because you're trying to convolute things to have your way. Because you want your friends and brothers and sisters and cousins to get the projects. That's not how it works. We will be so much further if you just do your job and follow the process. But before you start giving the housing authority anything, they better have their stuff together because we're not going through this situation again like we did with this marina project. Don't you ignore any kind. If they don't have the things on the timeline that they're supposed to have coming up here this month or whenever it comes up, then you better deny because I'm going to keep coming up here, bringing it to the forefront so the residents can hear and understand what's going on. I will be their reporter. I am. And I do my work. I'm up three o'clock in the morning doing my homework. And as far as all of these buildings, tall buildings, we're not New York City. And like I say, Mr. Evans, if you can get someone to come in here and educate the residents and educate them about climate change and what's going on. We have sinkholes on Broadway. We put all these heavy buildings on Broadway. What do you think it's going to do? According to my research, those kind of actions cause earthquakes and tsunamis, especially on a weak street, just like that building up there in Lake Park. It's a monster. It's an eyesore. It is, it, hopefully, a Category 5 doesn't come in here and just tear it down. Thank you. Thank you for comments. Shannon Barack, followed by Brandy Davis Balsamo. Welcome, Shannon. Hi, good evening. Um, good evening to the chair, the vice chair, the commissioners of the CRA board. My name is Shannon Barack. Um, I have a house in Lakeview Park. Uh, in Riviera. We fell in love with this neighborhood the moment we arrived. We moved here 10 years ago from New York, Queens, and this is the first place that we felt like we were in a real neighborhood. It's a very special place, a place where people still care about each other and look out for each other. That accompanied by the warm breezes and the sound of the boats, um, it just felt right. It's a wonderful place to live. We, like most of our neighbors, are vested in this community. We care about this community and we need you to align with us and to help us make a plan to improve the quality of life for the residents of our community. We have drainage issues which increase our risk during storms as well as raise our insurance rates. Adding to that is unmaintained outfalls, seawalls at the end of our streets 
that have no safeguards to prevent trash from going through the storm drains and straight into the intracoastal, the intracoastal which makes our neighborhood so special. The outflow is currently backed up and that adds to saltwater flooding in our area. Speeding and oversized vehicles going to and from the marina businesses expose our residents, our children, and our pets to these dangers as we have no sidewalks in our area. Residents have been run off the road when walking. Also, people don't know what to call our neighborhood or even that there is this special little place south of the bridge. We have no signage. Our streets are unmaintained with no clear solution for the blighted swale areas. We need a solution that doesn't burden the property owners, but solves the blight. We pay our taxes and we deserve to be treated like a real neighborhood. We need a single point of contact at the CRA who can answer procedural and timeline questions so that we can partner in the process. There are so many ways we can work together. We urge the Community Redevelopment Agency to partner with us in figuring out solutions. Can we get a commitment from you today to give our community the chance that it deserves? Thank you, and I apologize for my nervousness. I'm new to this. Thank you for your comment. Thank Ma you. Madam Clerk, let the record reflect Shepherds and Lawson's exit at 7.31 p.m. Thank you, Vice Chair. Next person. Brandy Davis Balsamo, followed by Victoria Beggs. Good evening, members of the chair. Um, well, Chair Lawson stepped away, uh, city manager. Um, you know me, I've been up here many times advocating for Lakeview Park, and uh, we have a couple neighbor here, neighbors here tonight who are also advocating for Lakeview Park. Uh, there have been a number of challenges, as you've heard many, many times, and as uh, Shannon just uh, said to you, but I want to talk about some of the achievements and not stay within the negative. That neighborhood, when my husband and I moved in, we fixed up our house. The before and after is absolutely amazing. Um, it's such a cute neighborhood. We have people who stop us on the street all the time to talk about how they love what we've done with the house. It was just in such a deplorable state when we moved there. The block has completely transformed. There's only one house that needs a little bit more love. There was a dilapidated house that um, I had to get uh, the building inspector out because the roof had caved in. No one was doing anything. So we as a neighborhood really rallied to finally get some action on that house. Now it's a brand new house full-time occupancy, the house behind us, not directly behind us, but across, there was someone who was clearly squatting and using drugs, and it was a really bad situation. We again rallied, got that house fixed up. That's now a brand new house. Uh, there have been several brand new homes built in the neighborhood. The market rate has gone up now. The homes, the two bedrooms are up to the 400,000s, I think even posting in a 480 range. Uh, it is really a charming neighborhood and uh, it's in that landmark area that you talk about, right? And so I hear all the time, I come to these meetings and I hear, you know, we wanna lift this area up, we wanna do uh, redevelopment, we wanna reimagine, we want the perception, the change. When I moved to that neighborhood on next door, the name that they had for the neighborhood was the Good Hood. The Good Hood, can you believe that? I had to advocate for six months to get that changed. I couldn't get my neighbors to agree to call it Lakeview Park because no one knew what the neighborhood's name was. I don't think half of the people still do. If you go to West Palm Beach, they have signs. I know you don't necessarily need a monument sign, but there are like decorative pole signs. Lakeview Park, this isn't that hard. We can work together. There are really like dedicated people in that neighborhood who have put, rolled up their sleeves, they've done work, we have the design skills, we have the motivation, we have the ability. We just need some partnership with the CRA. It's in your own plan with CRA. Signage, uh, you know, attacking the, the blight. The situation with the swales is ridiculous. They're, um, <laughs> they're asphalted and code compliance hasn't done anything because they've been left like that for so long. And now every time the claw comes by, it rips out a chunk of asphalt and then the residents call you and say, hey, the, the trash company has to pay to fix the asphalt in front of my house. So that's only half my list, but I implore you, we need a plan for that neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Victoria Beggs, followed by Margaret Shepard. 
Commissioners, thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm also from Lakeview Park, Victoria Beggs, 232 East 22nd Court. I'm a native Palm Beacher. I've loved our area. I grew up here, went to school here, had the good fortune to play a lot of tennis here. And I moved specifically to that neighborhood because it reminds me so much of Glen Ridge, where our family grew up. Small community um, contributes a lot to, to the rest of the community. And in my 12 years that I've been at Lakeview Park now, I've seen a lot of decline. And I'm really hoping that we can stop the decline, bring it back to where it was before. Um, yes, granted, as we know, it's there's a lot of development, but um, development can also go hand in hand with a neighborhood. So I'm here to volunteer to do anything to help make it the way it used to be. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Margaret Shepard. Mr. Vice Chair. Commissioner, Commissioner Lear had to leave. I beg your pardon? Commissioner Lanier had to leave, so I want to make it for the record, please. Can you show the record eight, I'm sorry, 736? Ms. Shepard. Margaret Shepard, Riviera Beach. I wanted to talk to other, about other things, but I'll go to you, Mrs. Uh, Millie Anderson. You kind of mentioned the mold uh, last week. And one thing I want to say, Mrs. Spirit, she stopped me if I'm not correct, but I've been doing it done this now about 20 years. Uh, the Heron Estates is owned by HTG. It is not owned by the Riviera Beach Housing Authority. The Riviera Beach Housing Authority is in partnership. After I think, is it 30 years? It becomes the Riviera Beach Housing Authority property. Uh, the mole was a mole. It was the houses, uh, being not open up and air out, it was dust and dirt. I went to the top and they began to explain it to me. Uh, the other day, the inspector for the housing authority came and I asked him what was going on at the housing authority. He began to explain it to me. So when people come up here and give you mixed messages, I want to say shame on them. Uh, the River Beach Housing Authority right now is in the midst of uh, the Judge Rogers site. I don't think they pay a dollar. I think Mr. Evans, correct me, I want to go on the record. I think they paid X number of dollars. I can't remember. But they are paying for that property. They're not paying a dollar. I think whoever's in there is, is paying a dollar for the property. I don't know too much. Stop me if I'm wrong, Mr. Spiritus. But the River Beach Housing Authority right now is building a home for people that just don't have anywhere to live. And I think it's going to be affordable because whether you like it or not, I have to sit at home all day answering questions. I don't get out my house till about 11 o'clock because every time I turn around, somebody say something that stirs up a bunch of stuff and then I have to start correcting them. I don't just listen to what's going on because you have people in place to try to make this thing deplorable. The city of Riviera Beach need houses. They need funding. And if this city can help the Riviera Beach Housing Authority, you should feel honored because they have four, what, four houses. They have a duplex about the bill. They have a fourplex that they have. And I, I'm just ashamed that people get up here and say stuff like that when they really need housing. And I think Mr. Hurt, he's an amazing black man. I think he's the fourth or, uh, ED that came in and the only one that has ever did anything for the Riviera Beach Housing Authority. And I think we should be grateful that it is people that need public housing. They need help with the rent going up to $2,900 and X, Y, Z. If they can get into the affordable housing, then they can live a good, comfortable life. Thank you. Mary Bram. It's Mayor Bram Rivera Beach. Um, let me just say that 
uh, housing is an essential thing. It is not so much about the housing, but it's how we build with those houses to make them adequate. This has been an ongoing problem that we've known for years about the mold over at the Heron Estate. It may be an, 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 another entity, but by law, C. Charge, Ms. Bram has to be on guard too. <laughs> All kind of cases. Ms. Bram knows that is in my, her law book as well too. So this is what we do here. But not only that, the housing authority lives, it resides in the city of Riviera Beach. Whatever goes on over there, it is a reflection of we as a city as well. The other residents made comments about their areas. Welcome to the real world here, because this is all over the city here. Potholes, drugs and stuff everywhere. So if we are to make our city better, it starts over the whole landscape because our city here, this is where we live and have to work as well as play. So every resident, every area in this city is facing those same obstacles. But are we getting there? Yes. Under the auspice of a leader here, with Mr. the CRA director, Mr. Jonathan Evans. I hear so often that. Okay, he holding down two jobs. Mr. Evans or anybody else, we are on a lifeline here with this CRA. It will no longer be in existence in another couple more years. So what goes out here goes over on the city side, and this is what builds us up. So we are on a lifeline here so that everybody would be able to benefit within this city here because this is where we should be. We wanted this desire. So if there's any changes to be made here, well, let us have a different board as well, because you shouldn't be governing the two boards. This is on the lifeline here. And every CRA manager, you get, you get more than a buck here. $20,000 a year, I've been hearing this as well as the residents, $20,000 for a salary compared to $200,000 that the CRA directors was charging. $185,000, $175,000. In 2015 was when this was built here, what Ms. Bram is standing in. And Ms. Bram and Emma Bates and all of us warriors, we got it done. In 2015, this is the only thing, this is the only thing that has been built over in the CRA except for those docks out there because we had to do those as well too. So when we talk, let's talk facts here because these are facts. And Clark, any other comments? Vice Chair, that's the end of comment cards. Thank you. Uh, Executive Director, any responses? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, with regards to um, the, the items that came up from the Lakeview Park community, um, staff and I have already had internal conversations about facilitating some uh, fiscal infrastructure improvements. As the board knows, we did ask for an appropriation to assist in um, helping move forward to some of the capital projects that are needed in that particular neighborhood. But there is some things uh, cosmetically that we can go in there and do. And so um, I will be instructing staff to to go through the neighborhood and, and resolve some of the issues um, from the uh, the signage to some of the, the stop signs, stop bars, even some of the uh, street um, uh, street markings are some things that are uh, going to be resolved here from staff over the next 30 days and then ultimately um, some more robust conversations with this board about some monies that we are looking to possibly earmark for the purposes of some improvements in that neighborhood. Uh, you all will be getting a, a correspondence from me here probably in the next two weeks concerning some budget priorities and what would you like to see incorporated in the budget because I will be providing budget direction to the staff for the purposes of putting together both the city and, and CRA budget. And so uh, this is one item that we do want to have conversations with. But we know that the neighborhood is, is very active and very engaged and there is some infrastructure improvements that can improve the quality of life and we intend to address that. And I think a lot of you have had those conversations with me about your desires to facilitate some investment in that neighborhood. So that's going to be a, an item that is a priority as part of the budget process. And um, that concludes my comments uh, with regards to public comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Executive Director. Any Executive Director 
comments and discussion? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, very briefly, uh, with regards to a public meeting that's being held tomorrow concerning redistricting, we have a community redistricting forum that's going to occur tomorrow here in the Marine Event Center at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. We have some redistricting experts that are from FAU that will be here. Um, also, we would like uh, if the board would indulge us the opportunity to be uh, presence in the room. The uh, facilitators would like to have the opportunity to, to meet you and ultimately have uh, some conversations with you in that forum if, if you're at all available. If not, we would look to queue up some uh, subsequent conversations in a public forum uh, after this first public meeting is provided for. At the meeting, we will have copies of the PowerPoint presentation as well as information we are going to record the meeting and then we are going to make some modifications and edit to make sure that the PowerPoint and everything is copacetic and then we'll be putting that on our website for public consumption. So um, if folks have a uh, some time available, we certainly are encouraging folks to show up for the meeting. It's a very important um, project and it's an important initiative that the community is involved in this particular process because invariably this board is going to make some decisions with regards to redistricting moving forward. So we would like to see a, a good cred out tomorrow. Uh, again, that's Thursday, April 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. here at the Marine Event Center. And that concludes my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Executive Director Evans. General Counsel, Mr. Smith. Not Mr. Chair. Members, Commissioner Spiritis. Mr. Vice Chair, I would like to thank the neighbors from uh, Lakeview Park for coming tonight and explaining their concerns. And I'm looking forward to the city manager's uh, uh, directives that he's going to give us and the options he's going to give us to help stabilize this most charming community. And uh, it is a beautiful community, and they do have some problems that need attention. And this community is in the CRA district, and the CRA district has an obligation to help stabilize and improve this community. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Spears. I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, Mr. Evans, I noticed today, and you know, I, I hope, and I see we have our community policing major here. I hope it wasn't because of we had a missing persons this morning, but today I actually noticed officers on foot patrol along Broadway. So I thought that was really great. That, that you know, that really gave me some reassurances. And I'm telling you, they were strolling. So it wasn't like it was just, he was out of the car. He was literally just walking, freelancing down um, Broadway, which I really was um, ecstatic about, because I think that's really what I come to expect, you know, especially in the CRA. So to that end, you know, I know Mr. Scott Evans and you work so that we can have those two officers and I don't want to micromanage them. But I think, you know, I think we're probably six months into the fiscal year, if not very close to it. Is there a report or something that we can see or know that these officers have had this many impressions or contacts? You know, I know I observed what I believe to be legal dumping and they was there like, you know, so, you know, it's just good to know right. that we set aside monies to have. CRA exclusive officers doing certain hours of the day, just kind of getting an update. And I don't expect that it's something that you may want to, you know, divulge whatever their operating techniques are, but certainly having some sort of report on what's going on there and how that's working. Mr. Chair, if I may, um, we certainly can bring back a report uh, to show, you know, some of the successes because to your point, staff has been very active in that particular part of our community to the point where um, two other municipal managers have reached out to me concerning our plan and our program for the purposes of duplicating it. So I, I know the major's doing really good work with his team to make sure that they're visible and highly visible in the neighborhood. And so we can share with the board some of the success stories um, and, and how the program is, is going along. Thank you, Mr. Evans. That's great. And uh, I was really happy to see on the news that we did, or at least the police department did, um, they were successful in in locating that missing person this morning who um, certainly is of the vulnerable population. So thank you, Riviera Beach Police Department, for that because, uh, you know, certainly that was, you know, it could have been a much worse situation. I was happy to know that that ended in, uh, you know, in, in a very positive result for the community. So thank you for that. Um, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Miller Anderson. I have none. Thank you. All right. Since there's nothing else for the good of the order, we stand adjourned, members. <laughs>